Hey there, everybody. Mr. Marek here. Let us take a few minutes to explore how energy works in an electric circuit. And uh, what we want to be able to do at the end of this video is understand how a light bulb takes electrical energy to produce heat, and then what the amount of light or heat depends on. So the first thing we might do is just review real quickly what electric potential energy is. It's the energy stored in a system of charges, keyword there being system meaning multiple charges that exert forces on each other. Uh, in order to push a bunch of charges together, you would have to do some work. Remember that doing work causes a change in energy. So as you do work on charges and you push them together, then you are giving them electric potential energy. And so when charges are far apart, they wouldn't have very much energy. As you push them closer together, you're doing work. And so when the charges are close together, now they've gained a bunch of potential energy and they're pushing each other far with a lot of force because they're close together. And so a very simple picture of a battery would be just a big pool, if you will, of positive charges that are all packed together. And so they have lots of electrical potential energy. Um, and so as those charges push other charges out, that's what creates a current. And so the electric potential, which is different than the electric potential energy, electric potential simply refers to the amount of energy per unit charge. And so it's kind of analogous to height, and I'll draw you an example in just a minute. The unit for electric potential is the volt, named after an Italian feller by the name of Alessandro Volta, who invented the first crude battery. And again, it's analogous to height for gravitational potential energy. This is easier to measure than the amount of electric potential energy. You just need a voltmeter to do that, and voltmeters are cheap. You get them from Lowe's for like five bucks. So here's an analogy. I have two water towers here. Both water towers have the same height. So every single individual drop of water, there's one drop of water in that tower, and then here's one drop of water in the other tower. Each individual drop of water would have the same amount of energy. And so the height tells us the basically the energy per drop, but the tower on the right has more drops of water in it, so it would take longer to run out of water, or it would take longer to run out of energy. So height is kind of analogous to voltage or electric potential. So these two batteries have the same electric potential. They're both 1.5 volts. It's actually printed on the battery in real small print somewhere. And so the one on the left is a AA battery. The one on the right is a D battery. The only difference is that the D battery has more charge. And so it's going to take longer for it to run out of energy. Each charge in the battery has the same energy because the batteries are at the same electric potential difference. And so when you have a device that runs on AA batteries, it could also run on D batteries, and it would actually run longer if you use D batteries instead of AA batteries. Um, the difference is typically the D batteries wouldn't fit inside the compartment design for the batteries. So the thing we have to remember about a resistor in a circuit is that it dissipates the electrical energy as heat. And so all the energy that the battery gives charges as electric potential energy is dissipated as heat as the charges move through the resistor. And so two examples would be a light bulb and an electric stove. And those two um, examples get so hot that they start to glow. And so all that a light bulb is is just a really, really hot really, really thin piece of wire in a vacuum, and it gets so hot, it creates photons of light. So the brightness of a light bulb depends on the power that it dissipates. So the more joules per second of power it dissipates, the brighter the light bulb is. The brightness of a light bulb depends on the circuit that you connect it to. So if you take a light bulb and you connect it to one circuit, you get one brightness, if you move it to a different circuit, you're going to get a different brightness. So when you go to the hardware store to buy new light bulbs and you look on there and it's like a 60 watt light bulb, that's only when it's connected to your standard 120 volt household outlet. 
if you were to connect it to a different um, circuit, you're going to get a different amount of light from your light bulb. And so we have a real simple equation for the amount of heat dissipated by a resistor. We just take the amount of energy from each charge, which is the electric potential, the V in the equation, and we take the amount of charges there are per second, which would be the current, or the I, in that equation. Multiply those together, and that gives us joules per second of power dissipated. So this would be in joules per second. Also remember that power is simply the change in energy over time, and so we could relate the power to the total amount of energy dissipated if we knew how long we were going to run the current through the resistor for. So again, remember that one watt is simply a joule per second. There are two other ways to write this equation. On the left, we're going to replace current in the equation. And so if we take Ohm's law and we solve it for current, we would get I equals V over R. And if we just plug in V over R for the I in the equation, then the equation would reduce to V squared over R. Conversely, if we replace the V using Ohm's law, solving for V would give us I times R. So if we just substitute that into the power equation, now we would get this version of the equation. So all three of these equations mean the same thing. They're more useful in different situations. For instance, if two things have the same voltage, you might use this to determine um, which one is exerting more power. So here's a very typical example. You're given a circuit and you're given some resistances and you're asked to rank them from um, least power dissipated to brightest. Or if they're um, light bulbs, you might say from dimmest to brightest. And so here's kind of the approach you might take. If you look at that circuit, you might notice that resistors A and D are in series with each other, meaning that the current that goes through A also has to go through D. There's no branches um, separating that current. And so if you compare the two resistors using the I squared R version of the equation, you would see that the resistor with resistance 2R would exert more power because I squared times 2R is bigger than I squared times R. So you could use that logic to figure out that bulb D would be brighter than bulb A. You might also notice that bulbs B and C have the same potential. They're in parallel with each other. So you might compare those two using the V squared over R version of the equation. And so if you divide by a bigger resistance, you would get less power. So you can use that logic to determine that bulb B is brighter than bulb C. And then you might compare bulbs A and B, and you might go, well, those two have the same resistance. And you might go that the current through A is bigger than the current through B. So going from A to B, there is a junction. So some of the current's going to go through A, but some of it's also going to go through light bulb C. And so since they have the same resistance and different currents, you might use the I squared R equation again to compare those. And if you kind of did the math, you would get that the current through light bulb B is one third the current through light bulb A. But it's not necessary to do that to see that it's smaller than the current through A. And from that, you can conclude that light bulb A is brighter than light bulb B. And then we could piece all three of those inequalities together into one solid answer choice. So these are the kind of things that you might be asked to do on the AP exam when it comes to ranking light bulbs um, in terms of their power dissipation or brightness. This is also something that we're going to explore in lab and could potentially show up on your lab-based practical that we're going to have in a few days. So, as always, if anything did not make sense, please be sure to bring it up and ask in class. Otherwise, we'll do some practice next time I see you guys. Till then, ta-ta.